Welcome to the CodeCast Podcast. Real-world insights for your daily medical coding and billing processes. And now, here's your host, Terry Fletcher. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the CodeCast Podcast today. My name is Terry Fletcher. Well, I hope you're staying at least a little bit comfortable in this heat. We are over 100 degrees in Southern California every day this week. And it's hot. My air conditioning in our house went out for two days and we had to come get it fixed last Saturday. So it was miserable. (laughs) That's all I can say. Um, But luckily it's back up and running and we are good to go. But oh my gosh, is it hot out there. So one thing today I wanted to really kind of tackle and in February I kind of talked about social determinants of health and that coding for that when it, uh, it came to reaching the moderate level visit or level four visit. But one thing I'm noticing is I'm getting questions using the SDOHs, so the Social Determinants of Health Secondary Diagnoses, which are in the Z code section or the T code section is also uh, could be possibly intentional injury too that we'll talk about. But I'm, I'm hearing it used incorrectly just to bump up the level to a level four uh, when somebody says, well, I'm really addressing chronic problems, but there's no medicine, medication management. And I'm like, well, give me a scenario. So this was a scenario that came out and it was say, basically said, we're reviewing one of the, our doctors. Um, they do these 10 minute tips for documentation for their physicians. And the subject of their PowerPoint was how to get to a level four when addressing chronic problems. Again, when there's no medicine management, which I have a hard time doing anything that only shows a physician how to over document their services to a higher level. I don't like that. You have to explain, well, if this is the patient, this is what it is. Showing them how to pad everything is just so suspect. But anyway, so when they we looked at the slide deck, um, they talked about, they said they had previously advised that the link between the social determinants of health and the challenge to the management of the patient be documented. Well, that's correct. So for example, let's say patients are on a medicine management to take um, their hypertension medication so that they um, can regulate their, obviously, hypertension. So they're on a certain regimen that was set by a physician. Well, some patients are under financial hardship or don't have um, prescription coverage. And so they go to get their medicine and they have those pill cutters and they take half of it. And you can't understand why it's really, you know, not affecting their levels in, in the point where it's not, you know, they're not reaching their goal. And so you, you query the patient and they say, oh, well, I'm only taking half because I can't afford it. So there is a code Z91.120 and it's patient's intentional underdosing of medication regimen due to financial hardship. And so there's also ones for uh, into unintentional versus intentional. This was intentional. There's also one for other reasons. And then there's unintentional, meaning that it says due to age-related debility. So maybe the patient's got dementia or they just um, they don't have one of those pill things that have the days of the week on there. But there's just a hard time remembering to take it. But let's just say that they use the one for financial hardship. Well, that's appropriate. That is a social determinant of health. That reflects that the patient was unable to keep their their medical regimen because of financial reasons and that makes all the sense in the world but here's one that was brought to my attention and it actually gave me pause and said oh my gosh so they want to get this practice wants to get an automatic moderate level based on this risk so the patient came in and they were 16 years old with quote unquote anxiety depression not at goal due to school issues patient family declined medication um, or it wasn't severe enough, they actually came in because the um, the 16 year old uh, was experiencing a rash and also some headaches. So they found out it was actually diet related, but they wanted to automatically add Z55.3, academic underachievement, failing at school, Z55.4, unhappy at school, dissatisfaction with school environment, and then Z55.9, conflict of school. So think of those of you who have teenagers or have school age kids. If a physician put that on your claim form and submitted it, that you're, you're, you're a daughter or son now has 
um, some mental health issues because that's under behavioral health as well. And you were not aware of that. And they also put on anxiety and depression. If that wasn't a clinical diagnosis, it was more of an observation. I'm talking about, boy, parents are not going to be happy, first of all. But secondly, unless there's a tie, so patient comes in for a rash and a headache, and unless when they're talking to the parents or even the patient and that child is, they feel that there is a link between maybe the rash or the headache to the, you know, not meeting school goals or it's causing them those issues and they link that and it's clearly stated within the record instead of just incidental findings in a conversation, you can't include that. You cannot include that. And the word is can't. You have to be very, very careful about adding SDOHs just because it tends to pull that visit potentially up to a level moderate. Now, remember, when we're talking about diagnoses, it says diagnosis or treatment that's significantly limited by social determinants of health. So what did the patient, what were they not able to get because of the SDOH? Just because you have under achieve, achievement in school or you're unhappy, does that mean you couldn't get medical treatment? Does that mean there was something there that, again, limited you to your, to your treatment or being able to do well? Um, you know, you have patients that are another social determinant of health, homelessness. Homelessness is a big one because if your doctor is sending you out for tests or sending you out for you know, services and you don't have a place to live or home health where they can come and help you, then you are lacking access to your home health services. And now that is a definite reason to be concerned. So, you know, if, if there are secondary diagnoses to help explain a patient's circumstances when it comes to access for medical care or adherence to medical advice or environmental factors, again, that could hinder care, then go ahead and report it and make sure the patient knows it's going to follow them around because it's being reported to their payer. But many practices reporting these codes without a direct causal relationship to the problems addressed in the encounter today is not the way to, you know, boost your um, your level of service. So please don't do that. It to me that's almost like what we're seeing a lot of times with um, doctors that are just listing the patient's medications, but they are not doing the management. They were not the ones that wrote the prescriptions. It has nothing to do with why they're seeing the patient today, and it's not going to affect treatment. There's no management there, so you can't. And I hate to use the word fabricate. But you can't basically use something that you know could possibly bump your code if there's no t direct tie-in to the problems addressed. The 2021 and 2023 guidelines are clear that a patient has to come in for number and complexity of problems addressed before that. And then you can go into the, the rest of the medical decision making about the amount and complexity of data or to be reviewed or an, and analyzed. And then what's the risk of complications or the morbidity and mortality of the patient management. So if it doesn't bear directly in the management of those problems addressed, it's not something that you should be adding to the information or to the patient's claim because that would be considered overcoding. Today's Coastcast is brought to you today by Icebreakers Ice Cubes Gum, Peppermint Flavor, ADA Accepted, Ice Cube Gum. Okay, so I also want to bring to your attention, in case you haven't seen what the news cycle has been talking about, and that is the CMS, so Medicare Proposed Fee Schedule for 2024. Oh my gosh, I don't know if any of you have seen it, but our conversion factor, which is our multiplier, is going to go down from... 33.8872 that we have now, it's going to go down 3.34%, so down to 32 and change, which is a problem. So it's going to have such a terrible impact. And this is what we were dealing with in, from what I saw, 1986. And we know what the cost of things are now. So let's, you know, you've got to fight, you've got to make sure that you comment on this period. I know that the AMA has been very loud about this. The American Medical Group Association have been also talking about this proposed pay cut. Um, you know, they keep paying and sending money out of country, but they're not paying our physicians here. So the American College of Rheumatology, the Society of Thoracic Surgeons, 
They're like, what are you talking about? Pretty soon we're going to be paying you to see Medicare patients. So let's hope that also anesthesia, it looks terrible for them. But it's just the Medicare program, they need to stop with these cuts. We, we just can't afford it. And make sure you take a look because Medicare put it out last week. It would be brutal what they're looking at to cut. So um, make sure that your physicians and you, you are also a stakeholder as a biller, coder, healthcare professional, um, that they go through and they let the they let Medicare and CMS know that this is not acceptable. Also, make sure you're talking to your specialty societies. Taking a three almost three and a half, three and a half percent cut to Medicare payments in 2024 that that's just not going to work. So make sure that you are definitely a voice and that you're heard and that you are um, you know taking taking a stand on this and not letting it pass. Can, Congress has a lot of oversight here and they can pull from somewhere else. They don't always have to pull from the Medicare program. Because remember, on top of that, we're looking at a 4% pay-go reduction again from when Biden increased his American Rescue Plan. Where do you think that comes from? There's no free lunch, no free money. Anytime there's money given to everybody, anytime they put in some kind of package, it comes from programs who constantly have money being paid in and they're pulling from Medicare. Plus, we're still dealing with the sequestration from the 2013 Obama administration when they, you know, cut uh, or raise the debt ceiling and they had to do cuts. So on top of that, this is just, oh, it's just, just terrible. So make sure that you are um, talking to your congressman, talking to your associations, and that um, you're also a voice in the fight against this reduction. So I wish it was more positive today, but I wanted to make sure you had the headlines that you also had some information on those social determinants of health. Next week, I'm going to be talking about pre-op visits. I think there's some confusion out there when pre-ops can be coded, when they can't, and what they're specifically for. I'm seeing a lot of TPE and UPIC audits on pre-ops, and I'm also seeing a lot of practices, really a lot of bariatric practices in general surgery, where they're doing um, weight reduction um, surgery and there's a time period you know patient goes through certain repertoire to lose weight and then they come back in and you know on and on and then they have this kind of like this uh, education session and they call it a pre-op well the patient already is scheduled for surgery and they were already cleared for surgery and so this is more of an administrative coming in and saying okay this is what to expect we're just reiterating what we've already told you so a patient's not going to schedule a surgery with already knowing what's going to happen and the outcome expected and so is that billable and we'll talk about that next week okay everyone have a great rest of your week make it a great day and thank you for listening to the codecast podcast for more information on medical coding billing auditing and compliance, including how to hire Terry, follow Terry on Twitter at TerryCoder1 or visit her website at www.terryfletcher.net. Podcast producer Joe Kuzma, music producer Assassin Music.